Hello and welcome back to my channel. Do you know that there is one particular video which is the most requested item in my group? And that is an instruction video on how to prepare your own menobenzone cream in your own home. Well, today is the day when I'm going to be finally making that video following a recipe that I perfected in 2007. At that time, I was a newbie and had a bit of help through some friends from US and UK who also had extensive vitiligo and were going through the pigmentation themselves. But they had one huge advantage over me. They had advanced degree in biochemistry and they were also making the same cream on their own with some different variations of a particular recipe. I was not able to particularly follow their recipe but eventually after a lot of trials and mistakes and breaking four blenders, I eventually learned to have a perfect recipe which I'm going to share with you today. So let's dive in. So starting with number one and the most important item in the recipe is the monobenzone chemical. We start with measuring 100 gram of it and keep it in a separate container. The chemical has around 99% purity and is available in two variations, regular and micronized. The difference is the particle size. The micronized is better because it has finer particle and thus its absorption through the skin is much better than the regular. The natural color of the monobenzone is buff color, kind of a light brown yellowish. Through some extra steps, the color can be made off white and even white, but light brown and even medium brown is fine and there is no difference in the purity or strength based on the color of the chemical. I'll show you what uh, I have. So this is how it looks like. Very, very fine powder. And as you can see, it, it is kind of a yellowish, uh, light brownish color. This powder can last you years as long as you keep it away from light. You can store it at the room temperature in a dark cupboard away from light and too much humidity, of course. Sometimes it may feel lumpy after it has been in storage for some time but that's okay because lumps are not hard and they will get blended anyway. In order to find a supplier for this monobenzone, I will give you a link below in the, in the video description with a huge database of monobenzone suppliers all across the world or you can also contact me on my Facebook ID and I will be able to help out if you are still struggling to find a cheap and reliable supplier. The average cost of this powder is around 250 US dollars per kg including shipping or around 200 US dollars excluding shipping. It could vary up and down depending on which country you are buying from but this is an average cost if let's say the supplier is from India. The second most important ingredient is the hand sanitizer. We need around 30 ml of it. Due to COVID situation these days, everyone has like tons of hand sanitizer gels in their houses anyway. So you could use some of those. We need around 30 ml of it. Uh, monobenzone is not soluble in water and can only be soluble in alcohol. So this is quite important ingredient. However, too much of it will be too harsh on your skin and too little would mean your powder will not be able to fully dissolve. My original recipe had pure liquid alcohol in it and it was a bit of disaster because it gave me instant rashes forcing me to stop the treatment and people could smell it from far. So a hand sanitizer with around 66 to 70 percent alcohol is the perfect answer. It is not too harsh on your body, it has a nice smell and it gives nice and thick texture to the cream. Third. And the ingredient which forms the base of the cream and has the largest volume is the moisturizer. We need around 170 ml of it. You should try to get a basic hydrating lotion which should not contain any kind of oil. So no shea butter, no cocoa butter, no essential oils, just simple hydrating lotions like this one from Jurgen. 
the reason i'm asking you not to buy anything with oil is because oils do not go with our recipe they will just float above this cream and your cream will not have the consistency you need also do not get any medicated moisturizers they also don't work and will spoil your recipe just get a basic simple hydrating moisturizer or lotion the fourth ingredient is the humble glycerin this is already 100 ml so i don't need to measure it it works as a hydrating agent which means it reduces the dryness in your body which is a common side effect of using monobenzone it also works as a thickener as an emulsifier which means it helps to keep everything together fifth ingredient is the aloe vera gel it works similar to glycerin but even more soothing to our skin we need around 70 ml of this it gives it makes its thickness its richness and its texture since applying monobenzone can sometimes give you some burning sensation this can help with cooling down of the skin the sixth ingredient is an optional item it is 30 ml of retin a or retinoin in the strength of 0.05 percent i call this optional because it is not an essential part of the mix it is not present in the original fda approved benaquin formula and it is also not present in the standard 20% monobenzone tubes sold on various websites. However, I started adding this in my mix after I read a study showing that if you mix tretinoin with monobenzone, the results are better than if you just use monobenzone. It was and still is a cheap over-the-counter drug for treating acne in many Asian and Middle East countries. It costs around 7 US dollars for a 30 gram tube. If this is a prescription only medicine in your country, you do not need to fret over it and just replace the 30 ml of retin a with 30 ml of additional moisturizer now that we have measured everything up let's have a last look at all the ingredients before we put them all in a blend So now is the time for the blending. Let's begin. First we start with putting the moisturizer into it. Then we put the glycerin. Monobenzone powder. We will keep the aloe vera and retin A for later.
it may seem like that nothing is going on, but actually a lot is going on inside. It's already getting in good shape. You can also use a hand blender with a wider bowl that works good as well. And now we put the last ingredient. We can put a bit of water as well. If, you, if the mixture bit seems a bit too thick, we can put a bit of water. You need a really powerful blender for this. I recommend at least four, 500 watts of power and you also need to blend for at least 10, 15 minutes give it a good thorough blending the longer you blend the better will be the texture of your cream you also need to stir a bit like this you need to keep blending till you see this running a bit if it is static keep blending eventually it will start running a bit and then you will know that okay your mix is almost complete You see how it's almost become a liquid now? I think that now it's ready. Now, if you look at the consistency of this cream, it's quite, quite thin, quite, quite lotion-like consistency. But over the time, some of the water will evaporate and it will become a bit thicker. It will have more cream-like consistency. But even now, I do not see any powders, any grains, nothing. It's perfect. And I hope if you make it yourself, it will be even better. Now, one last thing before I leave is that you should store your monobenzone in a non-transparent container so that the light doesn't reach it. So you can just close it, keep it in your bathroom cupboard somewhere and that this is how you store it. You can also put it in this, but it should be black one. Buy the black one. This is the glass one that I have, but buy the one which is, which is like non-transparent, which is not glass. I hope you like this video. 
Don't forget to check out the next video in this series. If you're new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and share the videos to people who you think would be interested in this topic. Ciao.